Today will be a good video because we're solely talking about books that I have loved so far this year. I'm talking about all of my five star reads that I read so far. Last year I did this video, but I did my four and five star reads and both, and I did like the first half and the last half and both those videos were like, gosh, like almost 40 minutes long. And I have had so many four star reads this year that I was like, no, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. We're only going to do my five stars. So what I think I have, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I have like 15 five stars that I've had this year. So definitely I don't think as many as I've had in previous years, but I also haven't read as many books so far this year as I read like in 2020, 2021, 2022. But what I do have here, like I genuinely love all of these books and I'm excited to chat about them. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're just going to go them. So I'm just going to go in order that I read these. I think for the most part, I tended to pick them off my shelves in order that I read them. So my first five star of the year was Take Me With You by Nina G. Jones. Also, I should just preface, I'm not doing any rereads as well, because if I'm rereading a book, it's five stars. So I'm only doing new reads this year. And Take Me With You was my first five star not reread that I had of the year. And actually, originally when I first read this book, I gave it a four and a half and I rounded it down to four. And then this book didn't leave my head. And the longer I sat on it, the more I was like, this was actually one of the most epic books I ever read. And it doesn't deserve anything less than five stars. And it'll probably end up on my top 10 of 2023 reading list. So this one is a dark captor captive romance. This one follows Vesper and she is a young nursing student, I think in like her early twenties and her mom is never around and has pretty much left her in charge of her younger brother. And she has this like solid boyfriend and she's just kind of like got her life planned out. You know, she's going to marry this dude eventually. She'll be taking care of her brother. And like, that's just kind of how her life is going to go. She's going to go to work. She's going to come home. She's going to take care of people and like rinse and repeat kind of thing. And she starts dreaming of feeling these eyes on her, watching her and like taking her away. And then one night that actually comes true when a man breaks into her home and plans to do something else entirely. But then when things kind of go awry and he has to break out of his original pattern, she just ends up begging him to take her with him and kind of in that sense, then saving her fiance and her younger brother at home. And the man who broke in ends up taking her away and it's their captive captive story. And our hero in this one, he is a very, very very messed up dude like let me tell you he does a lot of messed up things he's like a career criminal okay he always breaks into people's homes terrorizes them assaults them and then just like has this pattern and when that is broken by vesper he doesn't really know what to do and he all of a sudden then has an actual captive with him in his home and it's then about them kind of figuring out their dynamic together. Y'all, this book is literally insane. It is very dark. So if you have any triggers, make sure you look them up before diving into this one. Cause truly it is very dark, very heavy into the Stockholm syndrome aspect of a captor captive romance, truly the most like Stockholm-y captor captive romance I've ever read before. This is truly just like a random woman that he all of a sudden just got fixated on and ends up taking her. So I, absolutely love it though. Next up, I can't really say anything plot wise about this book because it is the second book following this couple and technically like the third book in the Magnolia Parks universe, but that is Magnolia Parks The Long Way Home and this one follows Magnolia and BJ. So kind of, I guess like the premise of this is like a gossip girl, but like high society London and like socialites between Magnolia and BJ and it's a friends to lovers, but like they are so toxic and messy. And at the beginning of their first book that they have together, they are broken up because BJ cheated on her and it's them just like they they can't help but love each other but they also like can't move on but they do other things like they date other people to hurt each other and this is just a continuation of their romance and I can't really say more but it just gave so much depth to their romance and totally painted a picture of why these two are so entangled with each other and why their souls are just like meant to be together but then it's like obstacles that keep getting in the way it ended on a huge cliffhanger and I definitely need book three like ASAP I absolutely loved this book so much. Again, one of my favorites of the year, made me cry, but I can't really say anything more, so you'll just have to read it yourself. Next up, I read Offside by Avery Keelan. This was another five star for me. Some Falls, Bailey and Chase, and it's a college, enemies to lovers, kind of like rivals to lovers, hockey romance. So Bailey goes to one school and she's dating the star of their hockey team there, and like all of her friends are like involved with the hockey team, and like her brother's on the hockey team, so really her entire life all revolves around hockey at the school. And then on her 21st birthday, her boyfriend ends up 
dumping her and then that kind of causes like a lot of strain between her friends and her brother and so on and so she decides that she needs to go out and have a rebound and when she's out at a bar one night she ends up meeting Chase and they kind of like hit it off a little bit even though he is the star of the rival schools hockey team and their friendship definitely like further some rifts between people but they just can't help but forming a friendship and eventually forming a romance and I really loved this one I love hockey romances I feel like right now I'm kind of like over it at the moment just because there's so many hockey romances out but this one was truly just so good and I loved their chemistry and the slow burn of their romance I love a good slow burn and like building up the tension and like them being friends and like having that little like those little like moments before they want to like act on their feelings and then when they do the way that Chase defends her and on the ice when her ex is trying to trash talk her on the ice and he's like uh-uh he's not gonna let that happen he doesn't play around oh, so so good this is the only one that I don't own physically and that's Stitches by Sam Mariano so I read this one for a reading vlog when Cheyenne picked my books that I was going to read and I fell in love with this so this is an mfm romance and it's not like dark but it's definitely like got a few like of the darker themes to it but i would say overall it's not but so this one i think is her, her name's moira and i can't remember i only remember that because of Shit's creek i don't remember what the two dudes names are but anyway so she's married to her husband one of the heroes and the husband is in business with his best friend and they have like shared everything together over their entire lives like even through their childhoods adulthoods now they're in business together what have you and our hero who is not married to the heroine he has a fiance or he has a wife and he's trying to get divorced from her and she is just making it nasty as possible as she can for him she's not letting him go that easily she likes the money that he has she likes the lifestyle that he's provided her but he is just ready to be done with her and he is also starting to distance himself a little bit from the from his best friend and his wife because he's starting to realize that he has friend has feelings for Moira that obviously he doesn't want to act on and like hurt his friendship with his best friend or hurt his friendship with Moira or mess anything up between them. But then when the best friend and the husband hears about this and kind of realizes that that's what he's doing, he's like, you know what? We've shared everything my whole life. Let's share my wife. And Moira at first is like, oh my God, no, I can't imagine that. Like he's my husband, like I love my husband. I'm faithful to my husband. I could never do that. But she loves Sebastian. Oh, his name is Sebastian. But she loves Sebastian too. And she can't like picture a life without him in it. So if this is the way to like keep him around and keep him in their business and keep them as their friend, she's willing to do what she has to do, even if that means sharing herself with him and her husband's best friend. And it ends up being their romance. So fun. So hot. Love the connection between the three. And it actually felt genuine. I felt the genuine friendship between the two heroes and I felt the connection between Moira and Sebastian and Moira and her husband. I feel like a lot of the times in MFMs, I struggle with that, that I feel like one of the romances feels stronger than the other. The connections like don't all feel equal, but in this case they really did. And I absolutely loved it, but I don't love the cover. So I haven't bought it yet, but maybe maybe one day okay next up i finished the brutal birthright series by uh sophie lark this year and heavy crown was my last five star read in that series i absolutely loved and adored this book i'd say it's my second favorite in the entire series overall savage lover still remains to be unbeaten but heavy crown was so good and this one follows sebastian and elena so sebastian is the youngest son of this mafia family in chicago and he was supposed to be like a star athlete and then he had an accident and he was kind of taken out of the sport and now he's just kind of struggle a little bit of being like where is my purpose now and my family like am I supposed to join like the mafia life now am I supposed to like kind of help take over for my family so he's kind of grappling with that a little bit and one night he's walking home and he ends up seeing this woman like getting abducted and like the good guy that he is he swoops in and he helps her out and he <laughs> helps her get away and that ends up being Yelena and they kind of hit it off and start having a bit of a romance and then you learn and this isn't a spoiler because you literally learn it in like Yelena's first POV that she was actually a plant there by her father, who is the head of the Russian mafia and has like long standing beef with Sebastian's family. And he actually sent Yelena in to kind of like draw Sebastian in to like infiltrate their family and like screw them over. And Yelena doesn't want to do that. She doesn't want to be a pawn in her father's game, but she really has no out. And the more that her feelings develop for Sebastian, the guiltier she feels about keeping the secret. And I'll let you read it to find out. I do think with these ones, you're like technically supposed to read them in order. I think that would make most sense, but I feel like they're easy enough to follow that if you just want to jump into this one, like who am I to tell you what to do? So I really loved this one. I was blown away and I really actually love Sebastian and Elena's connection a lot. So overall, 
Mm. Good. It's good. Now this one. This book. This book has messed me up. It has messed me up and I can't wait to reread it because I want to reread it physically and be able to annotate it. Um, and that is Even If It Hurts by Marnie Mann. This is going to be a top book for me of the year. It's kind of fighting for first place right now with another book I'll get to. And it'll just see like what my mood ends up being at the end of the year for who will get that top spot. But right now, this is definitely a contender. So this one follows Chloe. And so when she is in college, she ends up studying abroad for a semester and she goes overseas. And as she's over there, she ends up meeting Oliver. And they just have a whirlwind romance. She has so many like first love moments with him. They just really have a an amazing romance over there. But then obviously her time is coming to an end over there and they're starting to look at like, Mm, how is this going to work with you returning back to the States and him staying, I think is it in London maybe? Like, how is this going to work? And when she ends up getting a job offer, he's like, no, you cannot stay here. You have to go home and pursue that. Like I won't be the one to keep you behind. And they basically say their goodbyes. And then when she gets back home, they slowly drift apart and she ends up meeting Lance years down the road. They fall in love. They have a great romance. They build a life together. They get married and they're just truly like starting their lives together. But then Chloe ends up getting a job offer that takes her back overseas and maybe opens up old feelings that she didn't know were still there. Here's the thing with this book. I've talked about it before. I, this book hit me so deeply, I think because there were certain parts of it that felt very, very personal to me. So I don't know if anyone else is going to love this book as much as I did. It is a love triangle. It does have cheating in it. Those are things that a lot of people don't like. Me personally, I absolutely loved and adored it. And after I finished this book, I literally just said, I never sit alone with my thoughts and I just had to sit alone on my sofa and I literally stared out my door. Like I couldn't move. I was so distraught. Also, sorry if you can hear my uh, washer alarm going off in the background. This book hurt me. It hurt me so good. And I just absolutely loved it. I, I I don't even think I can express how much I loved it. If you if you know me, then you know. Next up, we got one of my most surprising ones this year, mostly because it came out of nowhere, and that is Unfurl by Elodie Hart. So this one Cheyenne found when we did our trope battle readathon. And she just like I think she just randomly found this book on Amazon or something. And I had no expectations going into it, and I ended up being completely blown away by it. This one follows Belle and Rafe. So it's a neighbor's age gap really hot romance. <laughs> I don't know. So Belle, she is what she just graduated university recently and she's starting work in an art gallery and she is, oh, there's all these people outside my window right now. They're like literally right outside it. Hold on. Me, I'm like, I want a man. And then three men stand in front of my window and I'm like, mm, man. <laughs> Unfurl. So Belle is working for an art gallery. One thing that she's dealing with is a lot of struggling with her religion and what she was raised to believe. Her father raised her very, very Catholic and like sent her, I think, to like an all girls school. And she was raised, you know, to like keep pure, like all, all that kind of like purity culture stuff is really ingrained in her head. Now that she's like a young woman, she wants to like start to kind of explore things. She wants to finally like see what everyone else has been talking about, but she doesn't really know how to go about it and like like a safe way rather than just finding like a random person. So she ends up finding out about this club that has a program that you can enlist yourself in and explore things, but in like a safe controlled environment exactly the way that you want to and like what you're comfortable with. And it turns out that her hot neighbor Rafe is the one who owns the club. And as soon as he finds out that Bella's applying to be a participant, he wants in on her program because he is very attracted to her and it ends up being their romance. The best way that I can describe it is if Salacious Players Club and Priest came together into one book because it's got a lot of the, like the religious trauma a little bit and like trying to like deconstruct from like the the headspace that like all of the religion has put her into and then also Salacious because it is a spicy club and but it's like a little more like loose than Salacious Players Club is and it's wild it's a really fun setting and I absolutely loved this book I loved their connection it was hot it was deep the writing was beautiful loved everything about this book next up oof is a messed up one and I love it. And that's That Sick Love by Jesse Hall. So this one falls Arrow and Brienne. So this one, um, it's stalkery. It's got religious, it's got cults in it. Uh, it's got a little bit of an age gap. I think what, there's like nine years between them maybe. So anyways, Brienne, 
she has been raised in a cult and she is finally at a point I think she's like 18 or 19 and she's almost getting ready to like ascend to a higher position in the cult which like women don't have in their world and she's like going to be the first one and she's like really into it she's excited about it however she has a stalker who's been leaving her little notes and like saying some things to her that she's kind of like mm, what's going on here and that is Arrow and he is trying to help her see the light and like pull her out and realize that what she believes, the people that she's surrounded by, they don't have her best intentions at their core and that she's actually in danger. And he's really trying to like pull her out of that. But I literally don't want to say anything more because I'm kind of scared of like spoiling it. Cause I remember like going into this book, I didn't really know any of the details and I was like, am I supposed to? And I don't think you are. So I'm going to leave it at that. So that way I don't spoil you at all, but it's dark. It's messed up, got some triggers. Arrow is a walk and talk and red flag and I absolutely love him for it. And I just really love their romance. And there are so many scenes in here that like made me giddy reading them in terms of like him just pushing and pushing and pushing on Brainy to really like break through inside of herself. So beautiful, so good absolutely love. Except I'm going to lump these three together because they are all a part of a series and they are books two, three, and four in the Like Us series by Krista and Becca Ritchie. So the first book I gave four and a half stars and the fifth book I also gave four and a half stars. So I'm not including both of those because they weren't rounded up to five, but I'm going to include all these. So these first two I'll kind of talk about together. They are Lovers Like Us and Alphas Like Us. This one is definitely my favorite out of Mafia and Pharaoh's books that I've read so far. Lovers Like Us also follows the same couple. So the first three books in the series all follow Mafia and Pharaoh. And this is a spinoff series of the Addicted Slash Callaway Sisters series by Kristen Beccarici. It's the second generation. So these first three books follow Mafi, who is uh, Lily and Lowe's oldest son. And it's his romance with his bodyguard. So it's kind of like friends to lovers, a little bit of an age gap forbidden because obviously you're not supposed to be dating your bodyguard and celebrity romance because Mafi is a very well-known celebrity because of who his parents are and who he has been become and I just absolutely have adored this series so much I felt like I went into it with pretty low expectations because I just all I heard was like people ripping on it for the most part I think I only heard like one person talk about it that actually loved it I think that was Caitlin everyone else I feel like hated these books and said they were like bad and like can't even compare to the parent series oh my god no I am obsessed with them these are so good Pharaoh is like the coolest character I've ever read in my entire life. And when I just mean like cool, like just genuinely, he's like a cool character. Not in terms of like he does cool things, you know, whatever. He's just genuinely like chill and cool and calm and collected until Mafi's threatened then don't mess with Pharaoh. And I love Mafi too. The way that he protects his family is just beautiful. And yeah, I have loved both of these. Those are books two and three. And then Tangled Like Us is book four. And this is where we start following a new couple. And this is Jane and Thatcher's romance. And Jane is uh, Rose and Connor's oldest daughter. And her bodyguard romance is actually fake dating with Thatcher. Thatcher is her big brooding bodyguard that we just absolutely love. And he is obsessed with Jane, but he definitely has to hide it because he is very like set on doing his duty but he just can't help flirting with Jane and he's very much like a by the rules kind of dude and when he has to start breaking them for Jane you just see how much he's willing to put on the line for Jane and I just absolutely loved it this is the other book that's the contender for my top book so far of the year as of right now I would still say this is my favorite book but even if it hurts and this one are definitely battling for number one so far these are like beyond five stars for me I just love 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 this book but I can't really say anything more obviously because like I said it's a part of a series and I don't wanna like give anything away before you get into it. Okay, now I have my last three, which I had just talked about in my wrap up, which was my last video last week because these were all my five stars that I read in June. So I'm gonna kinda like gloss over them a little bit more just because I talked about them so recently. And the first one is Between Hello and Goodbye by Emma Scott. So this one follows Faith and Asher. And it is a like city girl meets island boy and like long distance relationship and kind of like, I don't know. Is that kind of it? Yeah. I don't really know what else other tropes to like throw in here, but I think that kind of like covers the bases. So Faith is a really, is really successful in her job back home in Seattle. She's doing really well. She works in like marketing or something and her uh, company that she works for actually wants to make her a partner. However, they're just worried that she's a little too flighty and that she just, she shows up late, you know, she's hung over sometimes. She does great at her job and like she always gets the job done, but just like she doesn't really have it all together. So they're like, you really need to like sit back and think about what you want. So take some time off and then come back and give us your answer. So she ends up going to 
Hawaii to try to like just be at one with herself, no men, no drinking, no distractions, just like time with herself to kind of figure out what is up with her. And on her first day, she ends up injuring herself on a hike and she ends up meeting a first responder. And at first they kind of, he's kind of like stupid tourist, whatever, and this ends up being Asher. And then when he realizes that she truly has no one around to help take care of her, he ends up kind of being her nurse a little bit and nursing her back to health and then eventually shows her around the island and it ends up being their romance. Absolutely love this one. I did not expect some of the things and like the emotional turmoil that <laughs> would take place in it and take place inside of me. And I just love seeing a long distance relationship play out in a book and how they both had to choose each other ultimately to make it work. Absolutely loved it. So, so, so good. Next up, I had Keep Her Safe by QB Tyler. So this one follows Shay and Damien and it is a bodyguard age gap forbidding romance. I have a thing for the bodyguards this year, clearly. So Shay is a famous actress and her parents passed away like five years ago. And now she's in her early twenties and she has had the same bodyguard Damien for a while now. And she has always kind of had a thing for him. However, she's been dating this other actor and she's like fallen in love with him. You know, she's happy with him, what have you. Then she finds out that she's that he has been cheating on her and she immediately is like nope I'm done screw this however both their media teams are like hey we're building up for award season you like can't break up right now so they're like you can still like you can be broken up but you got to stay together in like the public eye and like the media so that way they still think you're together and so after she ends up like breaking things off with her boyfriend but still appearing like she's with him she starts making her move on Damien and Damien has resisted Shay he she actually made a move on him years ago he shut it down because he's very professional he wasn't going to cross that line and also like out of respect for her parents however then when her parents died he was actually ready to leave because he's like I'm too tempted I can't be with her anymore however he knew that he couldn't leave her after that point so he has been by her side ever since and when she starts making the moves on him he just he can't hold out and reject her any longer and it ends up being their romance I love it this man going feral whenever another man even looks at her I absolutely eat it up it was so hot it's obviously delivers on the spice it's QB what do you expect it's fun there's a little bit of like a little suspensey moment at the end that was great and yeah oh really really enjoyed this one and last but not least another book that could be up there in my top 10 at the end of the year is my life in shambles by Karina Halley so this one follows Valerie and Podrick. I think I'm saying that right. So Valerie, she recently broke up with her fiance and she's moved out of their apartment and then she gets laid off of her job and she has just had a rough go of it. So when she goes home for the holidays to be with her family, she gets reconnected with her two older sisters and they're like, hey, we're getting ready to go to Ireland on our sister trip. Now that you don't have anything holding you back, like come with us. And she decides that she needs to start saying yes to more things. So she agrees to go on this trip with them. And when she's there at a pub, she ends up meeting Podrick one night and they have like they kind of hit it off a little bit they have a one night stand kind of deal and then it just turns into them not wanting to leave each other and Podrick is a rugby player however he is not currently playing right now he had an injury and he's still kind of getting back to help back to like prime health I guess or like recuperating after that and he is just really having a bad moment between his injury some health things that are coming up for him and then now his father is dying and he is going to go home and see his dad and he ends up asking Valerie if she will come home as his fake fiance so that way he can kind of show his dad like hey look I'm doing okay as he passes away and she ends up agreeing and it ends up being their romance this book this book y'all it's one where I said it in my review and this is like the best way that I can describe it. Some romances you read the connection on page and some romances you feel the connection and this was one where I felt their connection even from their first night together. Normally I don't like the first night stand kind of things that then like turn into more because I feel like it moves a little too fast. The emotion and the depth of their connection already in that first night was so strong and I felt it so deeply that I was like these two have to keep going past this night. Like they can't just like hit it and quit it. Like they gotta come back to each other I loved this book again an emotional one. Oh, the way that they are just both there for each other through thick and thin it's just it was beautiful and I absolutely loved it so that was my last five star book that I've read so far this year but those are all of them that I've had like I said I have had some that are like four and a half rounded down or I've had literally tons of four stars but this would have been an insanely long video and to be honest if it was last year I probably would have done it this year I got other things to be doing. I got other projects to be working on y'all. I don't have time to talk about like 50 books in a video. So anyways, that is it for today's video. On Friday, I'm going to have a fun collaboration video coming up talking about my favorite kind of man 
and I think a lot of you might be able to guess what kind of man we're going to be talking about. Um, so yeah, that'll be up on Friday and that'll be fun. And then next Tuesday already, I'm going to have my first chatty get ready with me video that I talked about on my Instagram stories, kind of like previewing and asking you guys for some things to chat about and just having a chill chat together. So yeah, anyways, that is it for today's video and I will see you when I see you.